hi, and welcome to day one of E3. This is Respawn Aim Fire, the Kick-Ass Reverend Gaming Podcast, where Chad knows the full spiel, and I still don't know the full spiel, but this is E3. It's not a normal episode. I am Holden Pardo. <laughs> I'm here with my co-host. Do you want to say your name, Chad? Chad Michael and we, have a, <laughs> and we have a very special guest with us, Trevor. Want to introduce yourself? Yeah, Trevor Bettis. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't names. know you were doing the last name, so I was pausing. Oh, <laughs> man. You sound like a scared little baby. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome I do. to Respawn Aim Fire. This is my first ever podcast. <laughs> Yay! I don't do the hosting stuff a lot. This is, this is, no, you do- I, I'm out of. You're fish out of good. water right now. Oh, you're, you're doing Trevor, good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're going to start off with Devolver. We're going to jump into Bethesda's event after that and go to Microsoft. But the, the really important stuff is Devolver. We really got to talk about Devolver. Devolve me. The, the so most this was important of the night. It was. This is also Trevor's very first time watching a Devolver event. Oh my God. I feel so like I, I want to know your appreciation. <laughs> it feels like the first time. So, so I want to know what Trevor's <laughs> initial impressions are. Jesus, that was a nice pregnant pause we had there. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I asked a question. Oh, I couldn't hear you over Chad. No, you're totally fine. <laughs> uh, what was your impression of the of your very first Devolver event? Because they're unusual, to um, say the least. Uh, gifts don't do it justice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, was I prepared for a giant alien blood monster to purse out of someone's <laughs> chest? Am I making that up? Go find out if you haven't seen it. <laughs> uh, that game, though, is it Corin? Carrion? Carrion. That Corin. game was... Corin, I don't know. I literally wrote on my notes, Carrion, gross. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, uh, Carrion is a, what they call it a reverse harder game, where you are the monster with, like, basically tentacles kind of crawling around. It looks like you're growing in size as you eat people, I guess. Yeah. Looks they, badass they showed a and tech awesome. demo for this, like the beginning of the year i think and it looked just as gross but i love i like the the movement how like you just move you don't direct the tentacles that's kind of its own little ai for how it moves oh that's cool yeah i uh i completely missed this trailer because i was distracted by twitter uh so i i don't know anything about to carry on the side from the thing bursting out of the guy's that, uh, chest that, that great video game journalism <laughs> yeah i'm oh, sorry i was distracted because the final fantasy 7 remake really state leaked oh well so might we'll, we'll get to that in a moment might have leaked uh so that's kind of the only game at the developer event that i was like oh I'll, i'd actually might pick that up everything else i just kind of watched it for the zaniness and the fun i i want to play fall guys fall guys looks, fall guys like looks it, fun it is is mxc but like massively multiplayer <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to play it. Is that what it is? Yeah, because that's what it looked like. It was just you're a bunch. You're like these gummy looking guys that are running around like an obstacle course, and you're trying to just not die. But it looks like it's a bunch of players like a battle royale. But you're oh. not trying to kill each other. You're just trying to get to the end. Like, trying to get to the end of the obstacle course. That yeah. makes more sense than what I yeah, thought. Like, it was. Uh, like wipe. Yeah, I. I legitimately just didn't really know what it was. So I thought you, you were like controlling well. a horde, like a, a horde of a hundred little gummy people, and the, you wanted to get as many of them as you could to the end. Right mm-hmm. before the trailer, they said something about their multiplayer game. So, oh okay. Oh, that sounds even funner. <laughs> Coming twenty twenty to PS four and PC. I also really want to go, and I didn't check to see if the whole uh, Devolver bootleg is real. I a hundred percent guarantee you it's real. I, I'm sure oh, it I is. It I haven't checked my cell phone. I'll go. You know yes. what? I'm going to go look. <laughs> so you can go on Steam and you can buy an eight-in-one bootleg Devolver pack, where it's <laughs> knockoff versions of Devolver's own games that you can play. <laughs> it's fantastic. Like it's Enter the Gun Dungeon it, instead of it's Enter there. the Gun Dungeon. It's four ninety-five. <laughs> Uh, I I have to play Hotline Milwaukee. Oh my god! <laughs> so here's the list of games: Enter the Gun Dungeon. Hotline Milwaukee, uh, Ape Out Junior, Shooty Boots. <laughs> what is this? Love Trousers Three, Absolvers Cat Game, and Pekin Iku Ball Stars. <laughs> I gotta play this. They're gonna make five extra dollars off of that. That's so good. Yeah, they're so stupid. They are, but I love them. I love they, them. D- Devolver makes some of my favorite games, and so they can do whatever the hell they want. 
just keep making just putting stuff out i love it and now they make your favorite e3 press conferences <laughs> they do also <laughs> what did you guys think of uh of the gungeon arcade game they made a light gun game a light gun in gun, 2019 gun gun, gun. <laughs> hey, in 2020 is when it comes out uh, oh, that's fair, even that's more fair. in the future that's it's gonna be futuristic. the most fun dave and buster's game <laughs> dude right yes yeah, this is gonna be right next to the Halo, like what they had the Halo Combat Evolved game where you can play four player with the turrets and shit. Oh, so, they, I don't know. They, like, that's why right, they do have know. a Halo arcade game. I forgot about that. I'm always surprised when I walk in there. I'm just like, they made that into a game. Oh, look, it's right next to fucking Doodle Jump. <laughs> Doodle Jump. <laughs> and then the last thing they showed was my friend Pedro, which was some dude shooting people on a train. I don't know. It was blood, bullets, and bananas. Yeah, and I was like, sure. what? <laughs> yeah, honestly, at the end, I I was trying to think, <sighs> are those real games, or is that a... I are couldn't... They, are they jokes? The, okay, the train flippy, jumpy, shooty one has That's to a be real. real. They've but shown I that before. Can't, That's a real game. I can't believe that the bananas part of it is is real. Well, I've heard about a game called My Friend is Pedro, and I'm like, so that's it? But then right before that, they showed the the Messenger expansion that's coming out. I'm like, I know that's real. Yeah. That was on the Kind of Funny Showcase. I don't know. Who the hell knows? <laughs> I, the shooting game know. is definitely real, though. They have shown that before, yeah. Shooty um, boots. <laughs> <laughs> I said something to Bethesda and talk about games that we know for a fact are real. <laughs> that's true. Ooh. That is true. That's one thing I can say about Bethesda's event. The games they presented are are real. They do, do, are real. Do we just want to start at the beginning and and go talk about each one of them? Yeah, I'll let me pull up my notes actually for Bethesda. Um, first of all, just they really felt apologetic or really seemed apologetic about Fallout seventy six. Yes, I, yeah. My was, first note is they're not shying away from seventy six, mm-hmm. which was yeah, great. They, they say we fucked up, y'all. We know it. And then everything <laughs> that you shouted at us that you wanted, uh, we're gonna start giving it to you. I did love Todd starting Howard, with NPCs. Just be like, oh yeah, you know, you gave us our praise. Some of it was a little harsh, but <laughs> you gave it to us. Oh, he said he said deserved criticism as well. Like, oh yeah, like, yeah, he did say yeah. that. Yeah, uh, but yeah, they were definitely harsh. But there's a lot of like, we appreciate your feedback. Like, please give us more feedback. There's a lot of that. I was I was very surprised to see them that forward and, and open about it. But I think the uh, advancements that they showed off for Fallout 76 were quite impressive honestly i got pretty pumped to the point where i'm definitely doing that trial oh yeah free week trial so there's a a shit ton of stuff announced for fallout 76 there's yeah, the wastelanders so... which includes the human npcs dialogue trees and quest line and then there's the uh, sneak peek at nuclear winter which they still call nuclear winter uh which is a 52 player battle royale I can't, which I 52 looks... players how, probably because it'll fall apart if you Stephen add a 53rd is right now <laughs> What was that? How, do you, oh, how God, angry yeah. do you think Stephen Dutzman is right now? <laughs> His prediction: <laughs> They're going to make a Quake Battle Royale. It's like, oh, no, there it nope. is. It's a Wrong Fallout property. One. <laughs> so I think Doom would have made a better mechanical shooter in terms of just it feeling oh, yeah. good. Fallout, I'm, I'm a little concerned about with that, but they have really good crafting. They have a really clever way of making the ring uh, shrink throughout mm-hmm. the game as basically nukes go off yeah it it fits in the world very very well it does i do like that when you're the winner you're like the new overseer of vault 59 i thought that was really good mm-hmm. good stuff oh, actually but, i miss it that's that's really cool uh the the free weekend stuff is really cool that's starting tomorrow so june yeah. 10th and going through june 17th, 17th. Yeah. Uh, yeah. my wife and i actually kept the copy and so i she and i were both like i think i'm gonna hop back in and check this out like see how much it's changed since the beginning i do appreciate that they're making all that available for free yeah dude like, all these updates is coming free. are free yeah that's crazy it's all free they man. have to because they have it's it fixes the game you can't charge to fix the broken game <laughs> well i mean destiny did <laughs> you're right you're right <laughs> but they're fixing but- it yeah, I think the Wastelanders part's the biggest deal. That's the part yeah. that made me go, oh, I will definitely play this. It's going to be, it, it now is going to feel like an actual Fallout game. Here's my thing, though. Is, you're meeting these NPCs, is there going to be full voice acting? Yeah. Can they do that in a year? Okay, full voice acting. Yeah, they, they said that there's okay. going to be full dialogue trees. I don't think Well, they said full dialogue trees. That doesn't mean voice acting. That just means they could have text-based trees. No, no, no. You, they, they showed in that video. You walked up to that dude, and he started talking to you. You walked up to the uh, bandit. She started talking to you. So every, okay. all the NPCs have voice. Okay. I'm just wondering, is it going to be 
hey, they say an introductory line, and then everything else is in. I doubt it. Because it seems they... so fast to have that much voice acting added But to remember, a game. the scope of this is not the scope of Fallout 4. That. This is one quest line that they're adding yeah. that I'm sure has NPCs. I don't think they're adding NPCs okay. to the rest of the game. Yeah. Okay, okay. That clarifies that. Yeah. Uh, that makes much more sense. The, the Fallout 76 stuff, it being free... That's super great. The the NPCs. It is weird though that like, like they showed an NPC talking, and my wife like threw her arms up and was cheering. And like I later <laughs> saw a tweet from Jason Schreier that was like, "It's really weird that we're in a world where people are excited about NPCs being in a game." <laughs> <laughs> so after that, what did they show? Uh, they uh, well, Elder before Scrolls that, online. they talked about Elder Scrolls Blades. That's oh, right. Yeah. And they qualified, they, they gave it praise with the qualification saying it's the second straight number one mobile game after Fallout Shelter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, At least I they... tried this game, I downloaded it, I started playing it, and then it crashed. And then I tried to play it again, and it crashed. <laughs> so I don't know how this game is. <laughs> All the reviews I've read say it's a really great experience, but the... The like trying to get money from you is way too obnoxious mm. to make it worth it because you have like chest like the loot that you get you have to wait like six hours to open it or you could pay oh, money and open it now. Gross. Yeah, I also tr- I tried playing it and I was able to play at least t- kind of two little dungeon areas, but then it, when I was going to go replay it again, it had to download some sort of patch that took forever to download, and my kind of moment of oh I have a second to play this game was gone by the time mm-hmm. it finished downloading. So I just haven't really had an opportunity to go back to it. But it was, it was fine. I just wouldn't go back to play it again. <laughs> and well, now, now you Switch. can play it on your Switch! Yeah! It's on your TV! Now that it's on Switch, though, I don't know. There's other games I'd rather play on Switch if I'm on my Switch. But it's got Waggle now! <laughs> De- oh, never mind. I'll play it. <laughs> depending, on, depending on how quickly it loads into the game and if I don't have to do Waggle all the time, uh, that could just be a fun game where I'm like, I'm about to go to bed, but I want to play something real quick. Oh, I got my Switch. I'll just play that real fast. Mm-hmm. Nah. 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 <laughs> pass. Yeah, I'm going to pass on that, too. I'm also going to pass on the next game, which was... Actually, no, I'm not going to pass on the next game. I'm thinking it's Elder Scrolls Online. It's Ghostwire Tokyo. Dude! Which looks great. I'm pumped for this game. Absolutely pumped. Yeah, so this is from Shinji uh, Mikami, who uh, was the creator of Resident Evil and Evil Within, Mm -hmm. I believe. Evil Within, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if it was Evil Within, it was Resident Evil 4 that he worked on. That's right. Okay. Yeah. The um, woman that came out uh, on stage, she's the creative director. I read uh, that she uh, did the art design for uh, Okami. I think that's a, is it Okami. Is that the name? The one with the dog? The wolf? Yeah. 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 Uh, so Okami, Bayonetta, and Re- uh, uh, Evil Within. Oh, shnikes. So, oh, that gets me super excited. Yeah, so it, one thing I, I want to ask is, did they say it was a cinematic trailer or not? No, but it's. I believe it I'm was. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure it is because, okay. like, that was super pretty. It was super pretty. They also didn't announce a console, and we're yeah. at that time where did we just see our first next gen game? I don't I know. I think we did. I think. I think. Uh, I mean, th- we'll get to it later. But that looked more impressive than the Halo trailer that was shown. Like when they showed well, the shot yeah. for Ghostwire in the mall, yeah. I literally my first thought was that lighting is beautiful and i haven't thought that in a really long time a really long time also the character models i mean every person just looked uh, they looked almost as close to real as i've ever seen the 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 opening shot where they're where they're crossing the street um i was like oh they're doing a live action trailer and then it cut to the subway i went and i said yes oh my god that's (laughs) cg i had the same exact thought i'm like oh how weird why would they do a live action trailer to announce a game what an odd choice this now, keep in mind, thought. <laughs> it is Bethesda's conference, which means we could be seeing really high-end PC gameplay, too. No, it's true. Yeah. Rather than, like, Microsoft has to run on a console. Either way, though, this is the same thing as, like, Watch Dogs in 2012 was shown off on a really yeah. high-end PC. <laughs> Those leaves I, didn't I, blow anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, this is all speculation, just because we, we do not know really anything outside of what was shown in the trailers. They didn't really talk yeah. too much about what console it's going to be on, if it's cinematic or, you know, it was uh, in engine but it still looked really, really damn good either way. I'm all on board for that game. Um, 
Elder Scrolls Online, do you guys have anything to say about that? Cat I... people don't always land on their feet, it seems. That's what I thought, too. <laughs> I was like, oh, she's just going to pounce down there. Nope, she fell. Yep. Um, Elder Scrolls Online, I put a lot of time into it. Uh, not in the last few years. It's a game that I really want to love, but I don't have the time to love it. And it's because there's so many expansions. Well, no, it's not that. Like Their expansions <laughs> are actually done really well. Like uh, The last time I played was Morrowind. And you got in there, and you literally start where Elder Scrolls Three Morrowind started, and they were their own separate quests. You don't have to level up to go do them. They have this thing where you can go play anywhere in the world, and you're fine. It will level you up to where you need to be. You just don't have the, all the uh, attacks and gear. Um, so it it's a game that I really like. I love the fact that it's a, one that I can just hop in at any time and play anywhere I want, but... It's just it needs so much of my time that I don't ca- I don't have. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so watching this is basically like, oh man, I would love to make time yeah. for this. Yeah. So it's, it's like a giant tease the entire time watching this event. Pretty much. It's okay, Trevor. It's all right. <laughs> Did One command- game you don't have to make time for, Commander, Commander Keen. Keen. <laughs> Dude. Okay. So we'll start with this. That <laughs> game does not look fun. <laughs> I wrote, but, looks awful. <laughs> but when they said Commander Keen, I screamed. I loved the Commander Keen. Oh, you're one of those kid. people that knows what it is. Dude, I played Commander <laughs> Keen one through, th- I think it was, th- I think there was, but I pl- there was a bunch of Commander Keen games on my mom's laptop when I was a kid. And she'd literally turn on, shove it in my face and go, shut up. I have to work. And <laughs> I loved them. They were so much fun. I'd never heard of it before this. Is, does this look anything like the original Absolutely games? Absolutely not. Not a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> not a goddamn thing. Like, yeah, it's, very, it's, very forgettable looking. Yeah, it is. It's going to be forgettable, but at least they're doing something with it. Uh, then they, they showed an Elder Scrolls Legends trailer, which I thought, oh, what's new about it? They're, oh, they're just showing a, a, an awkward trailer. Okay, moving yeah, on. Yeah, they're just showing, oh, remember this exists? And it, it was just awkward real life. When the, it, sorry, go ahead. It was also just the most generic, awful form of a game trailer, which is yeah. you're in the world now because you're playing it on your phone. It's everywhere. It's around you. And I'm like, oh, that's so t- cliche. When the title screen came up, I went, oh, cool. I can go to the bathroom now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I tried it. It's interesting. It's just, it's another digital card game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the next trailer is fucking dope. Rage 2 knows how to put out a trailer, you guys. They're, they do. They're, it was like the 80s like sitcom trailer. And like every, they the had the music. With their names the freeze was... frames. God, it was so funny. Makes me want to play that game, but I won't play that game. Yeah, no, that's, that's kind of what I wrote. I went, Rage 2, looks funny, still don't care. <laughs> I'm enjoying it so far. That's good. No, yeah, I, it's a I good want game. that game to do well. It's not my game, but mm-hmm. it looks funny and it looks fun. Yeah, it, it is fun. I, I wouldn't say it's funny. It's fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> when he said, when Pete Hines said it's it's uh, it's critically acclaimed, I'm like, was it? <laughs> <laughs> you were the like, one. I like it. You were the one critic that acclaimed it. I've, <laughs> I like. I mean, I really like the gameplay of it. the The shooting is very, very sound. But I don't know. I just don't really care for the rest of it. It's not bad. I just, I'm just indifferent towards it. <laughs> so when I heard critically claimed, I'm like, no, I don't know if it's critically, critically claimed. But the DLC looks good. Yeah, and there's putting out so, new shit every week. They said. That yeah. is pretty cool. That like that's so classy. Like, I, I am kind of jealous because like I'm not interested in that game. But, like, games that I am interested in, I'm like, man, I wish that you guys did that kind of stuff, too. That would be pretty right. neat. <laughs> I do feel like it to make you not buy the game. I do feel like if you want to play a game just because it has great shooting mechanics, just wait for Doom Eternal. Oh, we're, we're almost there. Yeah. We're almost, almost there. Almost. We got to talk about Sign, Cyber Pilot. This game, uh, we saw a little bit of it on the screen behind the guy as they talked about it. <laughs> Uh, coming in July, it's a VR game. I don't actually think this is coming to PSVR though. I think this is just I Oculus. That, about that game, I didn't write yeah. it down. As soon as um, I heard Wolfenstein in VR, I'm like, this is Chad's favorite game of all time. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't think it's coming to PSVR. I'm a little 
it's a little strange how little they've shown have shown of Wolfenstein Youngblood. Though. I know. That, that oh, game comes of Youngblood out next month. Yeah, of Youngblood. What did I say? Did I say not say Youngblood? Um, no, I feel like they've shown off uh, comparatively to Cyberpilot a hundred and thousand percent more. Yeah. Could, yeah, compared to Cyberpilot, but that's a VR game. I feel like they showed a lot more of Wolfenstein one and two before those games came out. Oh, I don't yeah. know. I, for sure. Well, the, I think the other thing is, though, is isn't uh, Youngblood's um, a shorter game? Because it's only $40. It is, it? yeah. 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 Um, but, but then I, they said... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, I, I, I think they might be showing off less just because of that, because it is a shorter game. Um, that it's like, we did this as an off fun thing, but the, I don't think they're trying... I think they're trying to not get everyone as hyped as... Uh, Wolfenstein 2 because there was so much more in Wolfenstein 2. Well, but they said mm. right before Wolfenstein Youngblood, it's it's bigger than ever. It's got more guns and upgrades than we've ever Did had. They, oh wow! Yeah, so like I don't, I'm kind of huh. because I I, you're right. It is a forty dollar game. Hmm. It is a it's it feels like they're trying to do like a Uncharted La- a Lost Legacy. Yeah. But they didn't pitch Lost Legacy as it's got more levels than any Uncharted game has ever had before. Is is it a standalone game or is it an expansion? I have it's a standalone. That it's standalone. standalone. Game, yeah. That's weird. Hmm. And again, they didn't show that. You much. can play know. with two people. Oh Did, yeah. Have they said if it's couch co-op or just online co-op? Ooh. Because that was the I thing my wife know. was watching. She's like, "Is this couch co-op?" I'm like, "I I don't know." Because that could be a fun one for her and I to play through, but. You know, we're not going to get a second system just to do no, it. No, that's easy. Just why not just get the second system? Why not? Oh yeah, you know, let me just. Uh, I'll walk into uh, Best Buy. I'll take out my wallet, chuck it in the nearest guy's face, walk out with my Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you. The wallet's empty, bitch. Yeah, it's true. Hey, that's their fault for not looking fast. Uh, local co-op not supported. That is disappointing. But I did lie about Cyber Cyber Pilot. It is everything but Oculus. So really. Yeah, Steam VR and uh, PSVR. Uh, that's cool, but Oc- that's weird. Oh, that's if, not an Oculus. If you, if it's on Steam VR, it can be run on an Oculus. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know anything about VR. It stands <laughs> for Vexy Baby. All I know is that I want to play Beat Saber, and it makes me think I can beat, lose weight. Beat, beat, beat. <laughs> it is possible. It is possible. Then we saw Death Loop, dude. Another Death game. Loop, Loop, cinematic Death or next Loop gen? looks dope. No, that was cinematic. That was I absolutely wanna cinematic. I want to play trailer. this game. Okay. It looks so cool. The studio behind Dishonored, Arcane Lion, a game that I did not enjoy because the hands were too big. <laughs> 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 that was 100% the thing that did it for me. <laughs> He's like, All right, the trailer starts up. Let me see their hands. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, that game looks fun. It's like it, so. It's like uh, they kill you, or you're dueling two people, fighting each other, and then like you die, and then you come back, and you yeah, have to it's do it like again um, somewhere else. Uh, and... what, the the Tom Cruise movie that I actually like, uh, Live Die Repeat. The, the yeah, Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. Well, yeah, now yeah. it's called Live Die Repeat. Yeah, no, it kind of looks like that. Where and it, it's going to be curious to find out is the other person a real person too? Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Where it just randomly this... matches you up, and you each have a goal. And if you run into each other, you have to fight. And Ooh. then you, whoever wins gets to keep going, and the other one has to restart. <laughs> Yo, Keanu! Right? That would be sick. So much so that I said sick. It's 2019. Sick. Dude, I wrote sick in my notes later. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that game looked really good. I like the guys that came out from uh, from Arcane Leon and talked about it. That was That was fun. Yeah, I, I want to yeah. see what the gameplay itself looks like for that because it's the concept's cool, but I don't really know what the game looks, looks like. Quite. Poop. <laughs> gameplay looks like poop. Jesus <laughs> the next thing they showed off was <clears throat> a big surprise. And that was Orion. Mm-hmm. Orion. This is it's around the cat's neck. Streaming technology that you build into your game, which <laughs> they didn't really go into technical details too much, but it sounds like it basically is a it's. It's a way of sending the assets in a much more efficient manner. Yeah, over, it, I over, kind right. of felt like Optimizing I was watching the game the cloud, in yeah. Silicon Valley like uh, <laughs> demo speeds, where they're like, "We compressed <laughs> it so much," <laughs> uh, and they said it doesn't reduce the, the quality of, of the game nearly as much as it has in the past. They showed Doom running on a like a phone with a, like a SteelSeries controller, uh, right on stage live. 
they got pretty close up. It looked like it was running pretty well, and yeah, there was it was hiccups, really but, good. There was a few hiccups, but you're at E3. Like, right, yeah. Dudesman said, <laughs> your internet is crap. I think the, I will, the I will talk about that, that later on. <laughs> the key phrase that he said was, without perceptible latency, yeah. which I think is kind of huge for streaming. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's still thing. not going to do the best for fighting games, probably, but something like Doom, where it's just a single player game and I just want to shoot some demons while I'm out. Yeah. That's gonna be great. Just blast some D's, baby. Blast some <laughs> D's. Notably, it's it's, uh, it's an SDK, it's a tool set. It doesn't matter if you're on Stadia, Project X Cloud, like no matter what it is, it's, it's going to work. It works with any game cool. engine. Yeah, any game engine. Uh, it's very, very they, cool stuff. They did say that you can um, sign up, if you sign up for the Slayer Club, which I literally just did because I did I, it, it wasn't loading during the press conference. Oh, wait, no, I forgot. I got to a stopping point and it didn't let me do it. Hold yeah. Um, so if you sign up for it tonight, I, they said tonight, but I think you can do it anytime between now and then, uh, you have a chance to get into the beta for Orion and play Doom for free, which I'm down for because I love that game. Yeah, and Chad, you should do that because you just, just should play Doom. I'm going to play Doom. Wait, have you not because played Because the Doom? next thing we saw was he Doom Eternal, it. and it looked so, I wrote, looks fucking sick. Dude, oh my god, yes. Ugh. I am going to put it on uh, the barf list for people. Don't put decide. it on the barf list. I'm going to play it on my own, and don't no, waste no, it on a game you've already played. Barf, I'll play it with you guys, and then we can, we can do a podcast, and I can just go the whole time, oh my god, I love Doom so much. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to play it again before Doom Eternal comes out because I'd really like to do a lot. And they've added, if you haven't gone back since the game launched, they've added a bunch of different modes. They've added arcade mode, they've added high score mode. Like they added all these different things to like just play the game again and do it in different ways and just be ridiculous. Actually, I might just play it again that way. Ridiculous. Why not? Yeah. Um, So, but man, Doom Eternal, it just looks, they just kept saying things I want to hear. They have fucking angels. You're yeah. going to heaven in Doom? Ah. Earth, <laughs> heaven, hell, November 22nd. Yeah. And that collector's edition with the helmet. I want the helmet. I'm and the guy who's wearing the helmet? Go to yeah. Work. Scare some people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and even Eternal the battle mode looks, looks kind of cool. Fantastic. Yeah, the battle mode is interesting. I I'm, really like the idea of the battle mode. Yeah. I think, it's, I think that makes... It makes, makes sense what? because say it. <laughs> no, no, it, no it, it it makes sense because I feel like if you're looking, I'm thinking about the whole battle royale with, with Doom. I think this kind of makes a little bit more more sense. Yes, than than a battle royale. The, I, I think I, I played a bit of the multiplayer in Doom 2016, and it was like it's fun, but I've done this so many times before. Mm-hmm. It it was nothing new. This is something new, and something like my friend Kyle and I can we're we're hanging out we're playing games we can go in as two demons fuck up a slayer or if he's not online i can go in as a slayer and fuck up two demons that's awesome i love that yeah, yeah. i mean it's <laughs> it's gonna be great we'll hear more about it at quake con apparently so it's kind of like in details but it quake sounds con. awesome yeah. oh, doom con as well because they're gonna have doom con. a Trando! lot of doom a lot of doom stuff there we yeah that was doom pretty much bethesda's event cons. uh overall Bethesda's event I thought was pretty typical. Yeah. I feel like there were it was you know, paced kind of weird. And there were a few games that I was like, oh, Doom Eternal. Ooh, Wolfenstein Youngblood. Ooh. It was anything else? Ghostwire. And was, everything else was like, okay, cool. It was better you, than you their uh their press conference, I think it was like two years ago. The one where they did like, here's uh, uh Bethesda land and here's all the oh, yeah, it was all that was one really weird and they didn't really do anything. Uh but yeah, overall, like my wife's a big Bethesda fan. Like, this is her favorite press conference, and she was like, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed. Yeah. It was a lot of things we were expecting, but I, I will say that Fallout 76 has got me kind of excited. I'm definitely yeah. going to do the trial, and if I let the trial, I can see myself picking that game up. It's only 30 bucks now. Not interested. <laughs> Call me, beat me, if you want to reach me. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I go to Kim Possible? <laughs> <laughs> it's on Game Pass now, I think, right? Fallout 76? No. Yeah, it is. Oh, is it? Last year. Oh, but you don't have an Xbox. Well, I do. I don't, know. Anyway, um, Microsoft's event, speaking of Xbox Game Pass. The 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 biggin of the day that started it's the yeah. biggin. So there's a lot here. I don't think we're going to talk about everything. Let's kind of talk about our, I guess, our highlights, because there's so much here. Yeah. But we'll talk about the, the next-gen stuff at, 
last. Yeah, we'll do uh, that. Let's just start off with that uh, that Cyberpunk 2077 trailer. Keanu oh, fucking uh, Reeves. Oh, wait a minute, you're jumping way into this no, thing. No, yeah, the, Cyberpunk 2077. That's the really important part, because here's the thing. Yeah. I have uh, Cyberpunk 27 not really interested in me. I like Cyberpunk stuff. For some reason, every trailer I've seen, I'm like, that's cool. Eh. His freaking face comes up on screen. Interest went from zero to 100. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because the rest of the trailer is what got me. Like, 10 seconds into this trailer, I wrote, fucking, oh my God. And I was like, this looks like it's going to have really, really great story stuff and great acting and performance capture and and it's interesting cinematic trailer. cut scenes yeah right. that was my, that was yeah. the weird so thing so motion I'm... capturing might be only for this well yeah. you still do motion capture for cinematic trailers i know but that's not the it's not the same as the game it might no, not be the game engine they're running still, off of for the they're giving a trailer. performance though they're giving a performance i know it's not in game engine but the performance is what i'm concerned about okay i, I don't saying. give okay. a shit about game engine okay. the, the, it was kind of confusing that they went with a cinematic trailer after doing the behind closed doors last year, everybody being like, we want to see gameplay and then them eventually showing it. And then not showing gameplay here was weird. Like it was doing behind the scenes again. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And I don't probably release it, you know, in three months afterwards when everyone's begging them for Mm -hmm. it, but we got a release date. April 16th, which means that if it is coming to next gen, They've got to do some kind of weird crossover thing, and like, if you buy it now, you can get an upgrade early or something. They've got to do something like that. Mm-hmm. We'll get more information about that in like February when the next consoles are actually shown off. Yeah. Let's see. Oh uh, yeah, I'm pumped for Cyberpunk. I'm actually surprised they gave a firm release date. Like, yeah. here's the yeah. day. I expected a release. Like, hey, it'll be out in spring or something like that. Well, I mean, it, with time zones, they've got like a day of wiggle room. <laughs> <laughs> I I genuinely thought that they were gonna go winter 2019, and then like two months from now, it's be like, oh, it's been delayed into you know Q1 2020, and but th- th- for them to like, here is the official freaking date. That's pretty impressive. It could still be delayed, but mm-hmm. I think they're gonna do it. Yeah, they uh, they've always said they are not gonna announce a release date until they know they can hit that. They don't yeah. want to delay it. So I yeah. I mean. A lot of companies have said that and then turned around and said, hey, we actually have to delay it because we want to release a good game. <laughs> but I think it sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my kind of big game. I'm like, holy shit, that looks just amazing. What, anyone else have got another one? Um, on starting with Ori Willow the Wisps. Uh, it looks stunning. That game looks beautiful. I played the first one and I got maybe like halfway through it and I kind of got bored with it. But man, I'm going to pick <laughs> this one up. But this one, Raving this one will sway you. It does. It looks so good. <laughs> and it's on Xbox Game Pass, which I'm sure I'll accidentally forget to unsubscribe from and have by then, too. February so, 11, 2020. I got to say, their Game Pass support this conference was pretty freaking good. Like, they made a really yeah. good argument to do Game Pass. Because that was, like, the next thing I had on my notes. Is the fact, like, Metro Exodus comes to Game Pass today. Like, that yep. game came out two months ago? Mm-hmm. Something like that? Halo Reach for the PC Game Pass. Halo Reach is finally on PC. Like that's I'm not a PC guy, but that's awesome for everyone that has been begging for that. I think what's even more awesome is that if you do the 14.99 deal, you get PC Game Pass with no additional charge. And uh, I think that Xbox bonkers. Live Gold. Yeah, Xbox yeah. Live Gold. Which, you know, like, that's the discounted price. That's, like, the yearly subscription price that you get for five bucks a month. You don't have to worry about, like, paying extra because it's only monthly. Mm-hmm. That's so insane. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to sign up for the $15 one because I've been doing Game Pass now for about a year. And I did. I also have the $60 renewal thing, so I'm just going to put that into 15 bucks <laughs> a month and go from there. Mm-hmm. That makes complete sense. Do you, so do you, do you have an Xbox? Yes. Okay. No, he just pays for Game Pass. I, that's so a good question. I, yeah, <laughs> I just I, want to support Microsoft. That's a dumb question. Well, I'm asking is Metro Exodus. Uh, you definitely should play Metro Exodus. It's it's, I, I'm gonna, it's enjoyable. Uh, we're going to download it tonight. My wife's going to play it. Uh, she's the big Metro person. I tried playing okay. the first ones. I'm like, I bullets are money. What are you talking about? That's uh, my man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but she loves post-apocalyptic stuff, so this is right up her alley. She is thrilled to get to play this game. It's awesome. 
it's a it's a good game. But the, the if I if I had to give like one moment besides like the later half of this conference that absolutely shocked me, Double Fine. Yeah, oh, yeah they bought Double a Fine. Microsoft company. That blows my mind. Like out of all the companies that I thought that they would get, I did not expect Tim Schafer and Double Fine to be one of them. And you made a good point when we were in in our text chat. Is it still is Psychonauts two still coming to PSVR? I assume so. I mean, it probably is. Well, but that's weird. When they showed off Psychonauts two, it was showed off as like, "Hey, Psychonauts two is finally here, and it's a PSVR thing." Like, yeah, that's how it was pitched and shown off initially. So that that just traded hands, completely just traded hands. And they they I mean they'll they have honored multi platform deals like with outer um, outer worlds. That's a multi platform mm-hmm. platform game, and now. Well, even Hellblade, they, they, so they're, they're still they got, doing that. They got, uh, it's, is it Ninja Theory that did Hellblade? Yeah. 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 They mm-hmm. got Ninja Theory, and then that same year it came out on Switch. So they're mm-hmm. still allowing people to do that. But it was just so weird. I did not expect them to have Double Fine, man. Yeah, that, think... was, that was a huge get. They also want to diversify, I think, just have a lot of really unique games. Mm-hmm. Simplify makes very unique games compared oh, to the yeah. developers. So I, I think they just want to have games where it's like, this is a really bizarre niche thing. You can only get this on Xbox. It's a big score for them. Mm-hmm. It's not a system seller, but those people who like Double Fine games really like Double Fine games, so they will get an Xbox now. Because Phil true. Spencer said so. <laughs> Him and his blazer and hippie, you know, hip video game <laughs> shirt. <laughs> When uh, when Bleeding Edge from Hellblade creators Ninja Theory leaked a couple of days ago, I think there was news around it that that was even still multi-platform. Hmm. That game did not look interesting to me. No, it, it, it's it Overwatch. It's melee Overwatch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just not my style. Are any of you uh, uh, Gears of War fans? I want to be. That's what I literally wrote down. I want to be interested in this game. <laughs> I want to be. I've I've played the first game twice all the way through. Mm-hmm. I've played the second game halfway through twice. <laughs> and uh, I haven't tried three or Judgment or four. But, like, I just, I want to be a fan of that so bad for some reason. No, I, I feel the same way because I'm like, it's got nasty monsters that you kill. It's got cool guns, chainsaws on the guns. That's pretty sweet. Uh huh. But for, like every time I start playing, I'm like, I just don't care. This pacing is so slow. Just let me shoot yeah. shit. Also, also, this this showing did nothing for me. No, absolutely that, that, nothing. Yeah. The thing with the faces, what was that? Well, I guess I, it was just I showing like that, that this is all about her for struggle. people that are already interested yeah. in the game. Exactly, yeah. but that's an odd choice. <laughs> it <laughs> <Just> very <laughs> much is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're gonna buy this game already? Here's a, like a minute long thing of just someone's face and making faces and but, buy the game still. Like, but, it was and, very and, strange. And, but buying but, the game still—that's the weird thing. A September release date, like September 10th. Yeah, Borderlands three. One day before the world changed forever. Borderlands three and and Destiny both are launching in that month. And I just looked to see if there's anything else because I oh, like I think Borderlands was. three is launching that day. Um, bor- or is it the end of the month? Because uh, I think it was September 10th for Gears of War. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Borderlands 3 is September 13th. Gotcha. Um, But yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, 10th for Gears 5 and 13th for Borderlands 3. It's just, I don't know, that feels like a weird month to launch that game. But I the, again, it's for people that already love that game. Like, I, I don't feel like they're trying to push that on new players. I don't know because the last year's trailer seemed like it was all about a completely new direction for the series, mm-hmm. and because it, it was all about her and her internal struggles, and like there's emotion finally in this game instead of just everyone being a thick necked white guy. And I don't no, there know. Was, so, like, there was, there's it's so weird. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It still has a thick neck though. It's thick neck. <laughs> so, so thick. <laughs> that just demo, a big juicy demo. neck. That multiplayer, new multiplayer mode they had, what was it called? Escape. That yeah, looks cool. Three player co op. Yeah, cool. Cool. I want to see Xavier Woods play that, but that's about as far as yeah. it goes. <laughs> but the Terminator. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> what a weird partnership. What a weird. Like, it started doing the panning and it showed the skulls. I'm like, 
are they are they about to have a fucking Terminator show up? And I was like, no. <laughs> and then it stops on the skull, and she goes, fuck, it's going to be the Terminator. Foot comes down. <laughs> <laughs> the transition where all of a sudden, like, there was fire all over the stage, and, like, then they, like, oh, yeah. I'm like, what is happening right so now? Confused. And then they were under the stage, and he's like, just to show some people playing on a, on a PC. I'm like, oh, well, we're they- doing a demo. Oh no! They we're just went under on. the stage to find a crappy room with another screen where they then showed the yeah. trailer. It's like, why didn't you just show that on the good screen? Yeah, the, the whole thing was very, very strange. Um, not as One strange as that... the pump, the uh, gears pop, though. Oh yeah, uh, that yeah. was did, really was it, bad okay, looking. It was they weird announced looking. that last year. Did they say it was a mobile yeah. game? Yes. Okay, I th- I was like, I when they showed it on the phone, I'm like, oh okay, that that's weird. I mean, it's already yeah, weird. It's to do a, a pop weird game, strategy but... game. It looks like that I'm not interested in, in the least. But I'm I'm not a mobile game guy, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. The the uh, Elite Controller Two actually looks pretty Ooh. cool. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, it, really it nice. holds up better yeah. than the original Elite Controller, which I went through two of before just saying "fuck it," I'm not getting another one. Oh, boo! Yeah, I know that was a thing. With the the, uh, the joysticks, um, just crapped out where it's like i i picked it up one day and the joystick's hanging down here oh Uh-oh. man and i'm like i don't play that hard <laughs> well now you can adjust the tension of it so it doesn't do that with that so weird if it's just long thing for a moment i thought was an actual like joystick thing they were trying to push yeah on. i was like how are you gonna control that <laughs> paddle on top <laughs> is this, is this for, like, are you playing like table tennis what's going on here I was also thinking, is this an accessibility thing of that I'm just not aware of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, it it, uh, it looks cool, and uh, depending on the price point, I'll probably pick it up. But what's interesting about I think the it was 180 that, bucks. How much is it? 180 bucks. Uh, I'll probably still buy it. Um, <laughs> what's really weird about that though is that that comes out this year, right? Yeah, but not. Uh, it doesn't release with the next console. That's the okay. So that's the interesting thing. Why would you make the elite controller now, when you just announced that you're that the next console is going to be out in holiday twenty twenty? Because Chad. all because um, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Next console is going to be forward compatible with all Xbox shit. That's I what would, I was getting to. I would go as far as to say is there's not going to be a new controller. Yeah, if they're going to use the same Xbox yeah. One controller. I yeah. that's I'm my 100% belief. In the same boat. Mm-hmm. Because yep. even in that, even then that weird, like we're going to it later, that that Scorpio, Scorpio trailer number two, they showed someone playing with an Xbox One controller. So I, I think, I definitely think that it's going to use the same stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I never thought we would ever see is Fantasy Star Online oh Two. Oh my god! This game came out in Japan in 2012. Japan only. 2012 came to Vita in Japan oh in 2013. God. Yeah. I never thought we were ever going to see this game. I had given up on it. But that shit is coming. And it is coming to Xbox One Spring 2020. It is free to play, which gives me a lot of concern. But <laughs> damn, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Fantasy Star Online is one of my favorite Dreamcast games. I Frickin literally wrote down Anime the MMO. <laughs> yep. Like, like it said Sega at the beginning, and like they were showing stuff. I'm like, oh, I think this is Fantasy Star. But then it just kept getting more ridiculous. I'm like, this is not the Fantasy Star that I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't believe it took seven years, eight years to come west. What kept happening with me, and this is with this trailer, this actually for. Fantasy Star Online 2 in particular, every time they say world premiere, I'm like, oh, it's a George R. R. Martin game. Oh, <laughs> every, we're almost there. Every time. We're almost we're there. Almost there. <laughs> and then, um, so we get to that one, and I'm like, for a split second, I went, man, George R. R. Martin really is going <laughs> in a different direction. <laughs> he finally found Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, was, what was it? Oh, okay. Did either of you... I know we're supposed to be talking about the things we enjoyed, but I'm going to talk about the thing that I didn't enjoy. What the fuck was Crossfire X? I don't know, but they built it up like it's supposed to be huge. Apparently, it's a that everyone should know about, I've never heard of it before in my life. Nope. The, like, a, a missile blew up behind a bunch of dudes, and then they were in water and not dead? What? I don't know. Never heard of it before, but apparently we should have. I guess. <laughs> um, 
the next thing I literally just wrote in all caps, give me Borderlands now. <laughs> because I want, I want, I want Borderlands, Borderlands. Games so That's bad. right. We have a we have a new DLC pack to play to prepare yeah. for it. And which is free I for can, a limited time. I can download the handsome collection and finally play with you guys. Suck up on my ding dong. <laughs> but uh, but but uh, but hold on. What 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 did they announce next? They announced this game. It's really exciting. It's called these, Battle these Toads. Developed. Oh fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. So, so they announced. I'm actually trying to find it in my notes here. Elden they announced... Ring. Elden, Elden Ring, Ring, the George R. R. Martin uh, uh, from software game. Is it, what's the guy's, what's the director's name? Miyazaki. Oh, Miyazaki. Miyazaki. Um, they didn't really show that much. No, it was definitely it was, a teaser. Finish your Lots of hype for nothing. A video game. Yeah, and it just <laughs> actually makes me, makes me really upset about leaks. Because I knew okay everything that. about this, I feel like, because of a leak. And I now I just have like an image to attach to something I already knew about. I would have much rather just have not known about it and be like, oh my god, those two guys are working together. Because that yeah. was the big surprise of the announcement. I, and I'm, I'm upset, not because that. of the reveal. I'm upset because someone leaked it. Because that was an awesome trailer otherwise. That was I, a really oh good god. teaser. I'm so stoked for it. was it. a good teaser trailer. If you did not know what this game was beforehand... That would have gotten you hyped as fuck. I don't know what this game and is I, now. Well, the, the, all it's you're supposed to know Dark is Souls. it's a George That's R. R. Martin inspired or George R. R. Martin collaborating with From Software to make a From Software game. Like that's all you have to know. That's what they wanted you to know, and that's really exciting. But all that leaked before the event, yeah. which makes it not as exciting. Um, but man, I still am really pumped for this game. I'm so pumped, so pumped for it. Ooh, speaking of pumped, uh, twelve minutes. Looks yeah. like a yeah. hella interesting game. Uh, they got my attention right off the bat when they said from Annapurna Studios. And I said, ooh. Mm-hmm. Who's that? Hello. Annapurna, they make a lot of like really great indie games and movies, actually, as well. Um, hmm. I want to say, was was that Edith Finch? Oh. Edith Finch. I think Fire, wasn't Firewatch published by them? I don't think Firewatch no, was. Hold on. I'm going to bring, bring up a list of no, yeah, that's games. Right, that's right. Games published. What remains of Edith Finch, Flower, Florence, Donut oh, County, Gone wow. Home, Ashen. Okay. Yeah, Outer no, Wilds. 12 minutes looks really good because it looks like if like the uh, if Groundhog's Day was just about ripping your heart out. Yeah. <laughs> I think I <laughs> they call it an Hogs interactive Day. thriller. Yeah, that it looks really good. And I, I I'm really curious to know if it's just that one fixed perspective of that apartment. Like, I kind of want it to just be that and not ever go to any other room or outside. Because, mm-hmm. oh, man, that just looks so cool. Yeah. Like, you really get to know that environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, they really haven't done that, like, a claustrophobia in games. I don't, At least I haven't seen that before. Yeah. In the same way as, like, Buried as a movie has that kind of claustrophobia as a movie. Oh, what a good say. movie great movie surprisingly oh. good movie speaking of surprising blair witch what the yeah. fuck blair witch game nothing leaked about this thank no. goodness because i was watching this trailer I was like yeah. what is this at, game at is this another outlast was, uh, I, well yeah first i thought it was uh um dead until daylight is that dead to, or dead by daylight dead by daylight i thought they're gonna do another one and then i was like is this outlast but fucking blair witch yeah and it actually looks really interesting yeah it does it really does uh what a! I haven't seen a movie franchise come to games before that I'm like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I also haven't seen a movie franchise come to games so far after it was relevant. Yeah, I don't know. That movie came out just a few years ago. Did that, it? The reboot. <laughs> it did, yeah. When was the reboot? I feel it was like two like years was... ago, I think. Oh wow! Yeah, it was well, still fine. like how often has a video game come out two years after the movie? And it's not even, like, based on that movie. It's just based on the property. Batman Arkham Asylum. Well, um, no, you, you shut up. <laughs> you shut up. <laughs> Lego Star Wars is coming out in 2020, not a Lego movie. Lego Star we're, Wars, we're just, We just Skywalker want to prove you wrong, Trevor. You guys so much. Why did I come on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but hey, It's okay. We'll make it up to you. We'll all play Battletoads together at some point. <laughs> no, get out. I call I call a pimple. Um... <laughs> Do you guys have any other things before the the the, the semi big news? Um, uh, Dying Light Two still uninterested. However, yep. 
they revealed the twist that, oh, you're playing as someone who's infected. And Troy Baker. Yeah. Uh, Forza Horizon Troy 4 Baker. with Legos. What a dumb twist to a dumb game. <laughs> <laughs> I would like it though if there was like the cars were destructible. So if you kind of like skid yeah. up against something, you'll see the Lego pieces like flying off. Well, of it. well, if they if they told me the yeah. spiritual successor to the 1998 hit Lego Racers, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I'm in. <laughs> but it, it's just Forza. Uh, they showed off some teases of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and I'm just so pumped for that. So, I am so pumped. So yesterday's footage, I was kind of blah about. Um, cause I was like, oh, this is just, this just looks like Force Unleashed 3. I've beat those games countless times. This trailer actually got me hyped. Yeah. Uh, the, the freaking the ATAT walking through the yep. swamp. Oh man. Mm-hmm. And then climbing up it while it's moving. Yeah. That was badass. I did love Saw Gerrera just landing on the front. Who are you? I'm like, that's the best intro you could have given him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very Star Wars intro as well. Yeah. The whole thing just feels so, so, so Star Wars, and that's what has me mm-hmm. more pumped, is that I went back and rewatched some footage of uh, Force Unleashed. I never played it, to be fair, but I kind of just watched some footage of it. I always wanted to, but at this point, it's probably not going to happen. It doesn't l- feel like Star Wars the same way this feels like Star Wars. I mean, a lot of that could be the graphic capabilities that they, can, uh, that they have nowadays will make that easier, but this just it nails the aesthetic so much. I'm so excited. It, it feels like it's got a lot of uh, of rebels in it. Like the mm-hmm. obviously, like we have like Sith Inquisitors and stuff. Um, but like the the dark stormtrooper with the double sided whatever thing, the staff. Dildo. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, it's purple. Why not? <laughs> uh, like that reveal. I'm like, oh yeah, this looks like a freaking um, rebels episode. This is awesome. Let's do this. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. I just wrote, it's just screaming. It's <laughs> it, oh, <no. laughs> with the with the Japanese voice actors that I don't like the most. <laughs> yeah, I we, that we heard straight about up Project looks Z like the anime ago. though. What was that? Well, we, it's, we heard about it's Project more Project. the game than I've ever, or more the show than anything else I've ever seen. I feel and I feel like it is literally you just playing through the anime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the, we, we heard about Project Z a while ago, and it, they said it was a action RPG. And they said that again in the subtitle. I'm like, I don't know what that means for this game, because it still just looked like Budokai. So, okay. Oh, is Budokai. It, uh, is it open world? Isn't it supposed to be open world as well? I think like, it's supposed does, to be. How does that work? I don't know. I don't know. It's also interesting that they titled it Kakarot because I'm like, are you going to do other ones around other characters or is I don't know. Yeah. Let's jump into the last light here. Yeah, let's talk about Project it. X Cloud and next gen stuff. I mean, was there really anything to talk about with Project X Cloud? I kind of feel yeah, we, like we learned nothing new about either of these things. Yeah, base. I mean, I don't know the, the next gen Project Scarlet. We have some good tidbits. Tid, we, tid, tidbits. We did learn Tiddy that it's pinty. not coming Mini out titties. this year. We did. We did <laughs> learn that. We did. <laughs> and we're learning, too, that it's not coming out in March, which I'm so glad to hear that, because that just never made any sense to me. It never made any sense. Was that an actual rumor that was going around? That was... Yeah, there was a rumor it was going to be, well, like, in spring, early 2020, hmm. is when the next-gen console would release. I, I just thought that was kind of silly, so I'm kind of yeah. glad to hear it. See, holiday 2020, because that just makes way more sense. Um, but let's talk about the those specs, man. Four times more powerful than an Xbox One X. Up to 8K with up to 120 frames per second. That's batshit insane. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it's going to have that new generation SSD and they're using... The SSD is also virtual RAM. That was... As well. So they were throwing a lot of words and numbers out that I'm like, that means literally nothing to me. But when they said that the RAM was... Like, the virtual RAM was on the SSD, that was pretty impressive. Uh, yeah. Asa Gray pointed out that, yes, they did say SSDs and solid-state drives. Like, with the power of SSDs and solid-state drives in the Xbox. What? <laughs> like, those are literally the same thing. Those are the same? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, um, it, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go, no, go but, ahead, Trevor. Go ahead. Like it, the PlayStation thing, they 100% focus on load times, too. Yeah. Yeah, so who would have thought that the big thing about next-gen would be hard drives? Yep. 
Well, it, it is kind of weird, though, because both Sony and now Microsoft have been like, and we're getting rid of those load times that all of you have been bitching about. Like, literally no one said anything about load times since Elder Scrolls 4. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, well, I, when, I, Sorry, go ahead. You know, in the video, she's like, oh, and, and um, those elevators. Oh, you're in an elevator. Do you know that it's just a hit that was, that, like, yeah, that was the last time we saw that. 2007! <laughs> I mean, it is. I actually think it's a big deal. Like playing, you know, a game like Bloodborne, where you die. It's like great. Got to wait forty seconds before I can play again. Uh, This is nice, you know, to have. Um, But it is the priority of both companies in a big, big, big way. It is, and that's weird because the ones before this have always been. We've got graphics. Look at our graphics. They're so graphically graphic, and now they're talking about load times and. It, I I do to hundred percent believe what you guys are, were talking about, where it's it's going to be cross generational, because I mm-hmm. don't think this is going to have a big enough jump that if they didn't spin it this way, it would be a new generation. I I disagree. I I was actually surprised at how big of a jump it was. Four times as powerful as Xbox One X. I'm waiting for like a digital foundry like analysis to really have mm-hmm. uh, you know good insight on this. I feel, but four times more powerful than an Xbox One X. Does that mean it has 24 teraflops of performance? All the flops. All the flops. Mm-hmm. All the flops. Stadia yeah. made a big deal out about having like we had 10 teraflops or 10.9 teraflops, something like that. Uh, 24 is that's just batshit crazy. That is mm-hmm. batshit. I don't think crazy. that's a direct translation like that. <laughs> I but it's if it's four <laughs> times more powerful as a they measure the power in teraflops. Is how you measure. It's the mm-hmm. number of floating point operations per minute. So if you can, or you're four times more powerful, that directly translates to teraflops. I know some of the words that Holden used. <laughs> <laughs> An 8K up to 124 frames per second. That's batshit insane power. I was on Reddit and someone made a um, someone misquoted an article about the Sony CEO saying that the next PlayStation was going to have 8K 124 hertz. And the person said, Miss Quinn said, 120 frames per second. And I said, no, that's insane. It won't be 120 frames per second. That's crazy talk. <laughs> and then literally a few days later, the Microsoft event, uh, I'm eating my words because they just said it and they're doing it. And I'm sure Sony's probably doing, is in the same wheelhouse as well. Yeah. I'm really floored by that. That's a huge, huge jump. And that's why I'm a little concerned about that the... The Halo Infinite trailer didn't show off a lot of that. I'm not concerned about Halo Infinite, but it seemed to show off a lot of that power. Yeah. Um, you guys ready to jump into that? Yeah. I I I I don't think there's really much more to add other than like Scarlet was again said, Extreme X Cloud was again said, and we know a 2020 holiday date. Yeah. yeah. We also know that X Cloud is coming is launching in October. Oh, that's and true. That's true. It sounds like. The first part of it that's launching is the remote play part, where your Xbox is the server that you're streaming from, mm-hmm. and not the Azure Cloud streaming one. That, that sounds like it's really going to be the game changer, but probably comes with a price tag as well. Because they kept calling, like, you could stream from your Xbox for free. That's for free. And then we also have console streaming via xCloud. It's like, okay. I guess I lied. There is a few things more to talk about. Okay, console streaming. So does that mean that, like... I, tur- I get up in the morning, I turn my Xbox on, I go to work, and then I can play while I'm there? Or do I do I have to have my Xbox on all the time? Is it, it sounds like no, remote it's, play. It's, it's remote play. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So is it just remote play in my house? No, you can play no. it. You can do it anywhere. Interesting. As long as you have an internet connection. Huh. They made it sound a lot fancier than it really was. I mean, Sony might as well have just said when they announced remote play, but you're turning your PlayStation into a server. Yeah. It's, it's the same. It's all the same stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's a nice addition to have. But the thing about yeah. it was what's supposed to make xCloud so revolutionary is the Azure servers. Like, they're like, we have them everywhere, and they're so advanced, everything like that. But, like, if your console's the server and not the Azure servers, then it's just going to be the same experience as remote play. Well, it's also some so- there's a software element to being an Azure server Well, that's well. Orion. Yeah. Well, software well, for, a- for Azure, like, making... Downloading some kind of software to turn your Xbox into an Azure server, or o- Orion is. I was that built was, in... that was a joke. That was a joke. Okay, <laughs> o- Orion's built into the game itself. This is software for the infrastructure to have the infrastructure coordinate. So you're saying you can does. download something to make your Xbox an Azure server? I'm not saying you have to download something. I'm saying that 
it could just be built into the operating system. Which you download. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. All I'm saying is that, like, the part that's actually going live doesn't sound like as revolutionary as they've been... Well, xCloud, it sounds like, is going to be the revolutionary thing, which we won't see for a little bit longer, it sounds like. Yeah. I, I, I The one thing I've been curious about is that if xCloud is going to be anything near what they're doing with Stadia, or if it's just going to be a thing in between on live and Stadia. I mean, it shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah I, I expected to hear a lot more about that. I feel like they responded to Google Stadia saying, oh, man, we can't wait to show you what's going to happen right. at E3. They did do that. Mm-hmm. And, and I expected, oh, they'll just probably show. I mean, he was so confident in that, you know, kind of retort to, to Stadia's announcement that I figured, oh, they're probably doing a lot of the same things that Stadia's doing. And now I feel the exact opposite, which is, oh, no, they got caught with their dick in their hand. <laughs> and now they realize they got to <laughs> oh go God. back and... <laughs> and they realize they got to, you know, get some stuff together before they can really show it off. I don't yeah. know. That's I have no idea. But not talking about it when you said you're going to talk about it, not a great look. Mm-mm. Yep. Yeah. But they did show a next gen game that is launching with the console. Yeah. It, it's also not a next gen game, it's a cross gen game because they did say it's coming to Xbox One as well. Did they? Yeah, last year. Um... And they actually like reaffirmed that sometime this year too. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that was that was Halo Infinite. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> so <laughs> It's like, if they had shown this in the middle of the event, it, I don't think this would have bothered me as much. Because it's just a Halo trailer, really. Mm -hmm. But they, yeah. they framed it as a next-gen thing. And looking at it, I'm thinking, wow, they decided to show off next-gen in a standard spaceship room. Yeah. With a guy who, his character model looks really good for this generation. Are, I'm not 100% convinced that was next-gen. They, they, they didn't say it, but to talk about it right now, after yeah. they talk about next gen stuff, frames it that way to, to say to, it's to launching. Does, say, to say it's launching with the console, to sound like that. To say it's launching with the console. Here's a look at it. I'm going. Oh, I can't wait to see a next gen. Oh, it looks like a Xbox One game. I feel like if they if it was running on Scarlet, they would have set it up with like, and yeah. here's our first footage of something running on Scarlet. But mm -hmm. the, dude, they kind of did do that though, because when they were they talking didn't, about though. no, they kind of did. The hear fact that we're having this conversation means they didn't. Chad, hear me out. Let me finish my thought. No, I won't. while they're talking about Scarlet's performance, what footage did they show? They showed footage of the Halo Infinite trailer from yeah. last year, saying this well, the amazing be, processing we can that do. That obviously this now. was not running on Scarlet though either. To I know fair, it wasn't, those... but again, they're talking about it in coordination with each other. <laughs> yes, it is confusing, but it's I don't think confusing. it was on Scarlet. Here's the thing. But Both I do agree that, that how they trailers. talk about it was confusing. Okay. Yeah. Like, that wasn't gameplay, but it's so weird that it was a cinematic trailer well, and it didn't look... I, I'm not 100% sure the second one was, like, an, a cinematic pre-rendered thing because there was still some aliasing going on in some of the finer details. Wait, you're talking mm. about the Halo one still? And the Halo... Yeah, the, okay, yeah. the second one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The trailer I think it was running on was cool. a game engine. Yeah, but the trailer itself was cool. Like, oh yeah, when he I, wipes the window yeah. and you see Master Chief floating out oh, there, I'm yeah. like, oh, goose poops. Like, I mean, I already knew what it was. They said it was Halo. I, I'm such a freaking nerd. I'm like, oh, he's in a pelican. Um, <laughs> uh, the, but he, when he wipes it and Chief's there, I'm like, oh, this, yeah, this is the good old Halo that I like. This is what I'm here mm -hmm. for. It immediately <laughs> made me say, I need to find a friend to play through all the Halos with right now. Hi. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> I have Game Pass! I do too! <laughs> oh, I unfortunately it's purchased Jane! My, I bought the Master Chief collection the night it came out and have regrets. <laughs> <laughs> but we can play. Um but yeah, the, the trailer itself looks really cool. They they showed like the Pelican thing, but then they did show the part afterwards with Chief walking toward these holograms, which I think looks a lot like the cartographer, um, and Cortana was talking. So that's cool, and apparently it is a sequel to Halo 5, which I wasn't... I was literally at one point, I'm like, did they just scrap everything after Halo 1? I kind of thought <laughs> that maybe they did do some retroactive... Well, I thought they announced it as a spiritual reboot. And in terms of developing, they're treating it as a spiritual well, they, reboot. Well, they said something about that, but then later they backtracked and they said, no, this is Halo 6, we're just calling it Halo Infinite. Okay, interesting. But, you know, that could change between now and then. Who the hell knows? 
Depends on whether or not it has Halo critical pop. reception. <laughs> Halo Pop? <laughs> <laughs> Exclusively on Project Scarlet. Oh, God. <laughs> It's exclusive on Project Scarlet. AK, 120 frames per second. Oh, my God. Exclusive. (laughs) Okay, you know, the first time, this is a complete aside. The first year they did the world exclusive. I was like, all right. Every year since, I'm like, please stop doing that. Please stop (laughs) doing that. Please. Please. Dear God, it's misleading and most likely wrong. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I, this time they were better with it because last year they'd be like world premiere world premiere console exclusive or oh, like yeah, world premiere true. like now it was just world premiere you haven't seen this before I, I actually like that it was just yeah. hey you haven't seen this one before it doesn't matter if it's with us or with someone else you just haven't seen it mm-hmm. that was nice that's true that's true you might have seen it online two days ago but we <laughs> promise you weren't supposed to see it <laughs> yeah. you may have seen it when that bastard Schreier tweeted about it (laughs) (laughs) i love you jason Schreier. i'm reading your book right now um (laughs) uh, but do you guys have any of the thoughts about halo that isn't about their graphics uh i don't know i've only played Halo three so i don't really have too much of a not a huge halo person Mm. nothing against it just not a halo person for the first time because of game pass for the first time in a long time, I'm going to play a Halo game when it comes out. Sweet. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty big Halo nerd. I have, I, I, when I was in college, I, I read all of the books. Like, I went hard into Oh, franchise. man. Yeah. I got really nerdy. Woo! Um, but it's, thing, it's cool. I do think it's really neat that it's launching with the console because this is the, like, the switch was the first time that it had a flagship game launch with it in a long time. Cause that was, it had been a big problem with console launches where it's like, cool, you got a new console. What do you have? Um, a fucking game about a Roman dude with tits that walk with their knees. <laughs> like, I don't, what are you doing? And even with PlayStation, like they had kill zone come out with the PS4. Yeah. Cool. Um, but the fact that th- the fact that they have Halo at launch is a big deal. Yeah, this is a very Breath of the Wild move as well. Yes, it's coming to the current and next gen consoles. Yes, all at once. Just in general, a Zelda move. Yeah, and that hope- is true. Yeah, the, the Twilight <laughs> Princess move. It's it's the Breath and hopefully of the Wild Chad move. will have the correct opinion about this Halo game, unlike the Breath of the Wild. Ooh. One. Yeah, try to defend any other Halo game. <laughs> oh, I can. Halo 5. And I will. <laughs> Except Halo 5. Don't bring up that trash. <laughs> I heard the multiplayer was really good, though. It's That's what good. everyone said. Yeah, But Halo 5, the campaign, apparently mm. was hot trash. Mm, it was, I did hear that. The characters are cool. Nathan Fillion was in it. <laughs> Not a Nathan Fillion fan. Oof. Okay, we Man, we, we got to move on from there. That's <laughs> weird. <laughs> well, so overall, uh, Xbox. I think so. It was it was a it was a good it was a good conference. Yeah, it I don't feel a, like I was. It was a conference that made me realize that we are going into a next generation because there was very little about this one that was like, oh, I am excited for the future of everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This was a uh, 2011, or 20, this is like the 2012 E3. Yeah, I thought the where, same thing. Yeah, they, it, it, good stuff. Mm-hmm. I know next year's going to be insane. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't wait. I'll be interested if Sony comes back next year. Uh, they I, will. They, they basically have said as much. Yeah. I, I, I do, like, it's, it's shitty to say it, but I do think that they didn't do it just because they don't have anything to announce. They have Last yeah. of Us 2, and they already did a barn showing of that last year. <laughs> the Both the barn showing, that's right. Yeah. Now, everyone, move out of here. <laughs> let's, let's get out of the barn now. Minutes, let's go talk to some people on the couch outside. Um, everyone will be thrilled. Not there. Not an ass will be. Every ass will be on the edge of its seat as we look at this couch. Um but what okay, so what what did you guys think overall of the first day of E three? It was good. It was good. I, I still think I hyped it up too much for myself. Same. As I do yeah. every year. Yeah, I texted Chad like the night before, basically just saying, I've been tampering my expectations, I'm trying to hype myself, but I just got so hyped last night. Mm-hmm. 
and I wish I just kept the expectations I had before. Yeah, but, I, I feel I feel very much the same way. Not disappointed though. There's nothing really disappointing today. I, we we got a new From Software game. We got a release date for for Cyberpunk. We got like a bunch of stuff. It was just kind of we the got a everything great else. Trailer for Cyberpunk. Yeah. yeah. See the Cyberpunk thing. I'm I'm really excited for Cyberpunk's E3 just because I want to see that demo in a few months. <laughs> I know it's <laughs> happening this week. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait for all the video game journalists to tell us how cool it was, and then to just sit here and go, yeah. "Well, I'm I'll take your word for it." <laughs> <laughs> um, while we have been chatting, there was a Final Fantasy concert in which they announced officially Final Fantasy VII remakes release date no as shit. March third, twenty twenty. And wow. nothing about it says Episode One or Chapter One. It's just Final Fantasy VII remake, March third, twenty twenty. But they I confirmed it was still episodic. No, they didn't. They haven't done that in two years. Everyone no, this been... year after the trailer, didn't they? Ignore there was it? there was a an article from somebody at some publication that says no, don't worry, it is still episodic. Was IGN, I didn't I actually. Think. I, I don't think it was IGN. I, think it was I haven't else. believed that they were going to do the episodic thing in a while because they showed a trailer at some E three a few years ago and made no mention of the episodic thing anymore and. I don't think they're going to do it. Oh, man. There's a minute-long trailer out. Oh, fuck. I've been watching a GIF of it, like, on repeat for the past 20 minutes. <laughs> so are we, we just going to watch it and <laughs> just annoy everyone listening to this right now? Oh, I'm so excited! <laughs> oh, my they announce God. it tonight and not tomorrow during their E3. I'm sure we're going to see that because there's a... They they announce uh, Square Enix does things where they announce stuff at concerts. They've I done know, that for but it's a Kingdom day. Hearts. They leaked it's themselves. A, it's, <laughs> oh, it's, not man. Even a, it's not even a day like that. Would have been like no one expected that. If you said yeah, it's going to be coming twenty twenty one, it would been like yeah, I guess that makes sense. That that would have been like a mic drop at the end of their event moment. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more at Square Enix's conference though. Yeah, oh, I'm starting God, to think we're so going to see Final Fantasy 16 tomorrow. Mm. They're going to get like, <laughs> I think they're going to finally do the. They're going to show it. They're going to say like, "Hey, it's it's coming." They're going to do some sort of tease. By the um, way, I know this is backtracking content, but Chad, when you said on the predictions episode that they're going to put all the Final Fantasies on Switch, I was in my car and just banged on the roof like, "Make it happen! <laughs> I want Final Fantasy 4! <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I have to decide whether or not I play Final Fantasy 7 again before the remake comes out. Oh, That's a big it. commitment. Uh, <laughs> I even bought that shit on Switch, and I'm like, Oof. <laughs> is that is that a feasible uh, two month barf? Do you think? Ooh. Yeah, I think so. Because I haven't played it before, and I have it on my Vita. I think I'm pretty sure I've got it on, on my Vita. Vita. I've got it on my PS4. I got my PS1 Classic. There's a lot. I'm gonna, of play it on play the, I'm gonna play it on my PS4 via remote play on my Vita, though, so I get all those trophies. <laughs> but, <laughs> Need them trophies. But you're also gonna Bluetooth your your PS4 controller to your Vita, and then have the Vita set up <laughs> at an angle on a mirror so you can play it in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just get it on Switch. Yeah, it's 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 good on Switch. Yeah, but you it's don't get trophies on Switch. I don't care about trophies. I <laughs> but about I that. do. Play for trophies okay. for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sign into my Every account and let me get trophies off you. <laughs> do it! <laughs> but we'll talk just... more about that tomorrow after Indeed. Square Enix's concert. Con- <laughs> conference. <laughs> hey, if they have a live band, sure, why not? They're a concert. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I think the announcement's really good, but the guitar solos not a not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> they what went about on a banjo long. solo? Go the Sony route <laughs> <laughs> or bamboo flute. <laughs> it was. God, Sony's fucking weird. I love them. They're so fucking weird. Yep. <laughs> All right, I think that is it for day one of E3. Mm-hmm. It's mm. in the bag. Is in the bag. Two days left. Mm. Mm. Two days of, of announcements left. Will I, uh, will I go into a conference room on my lunch break tomorrow and watch the Ubisoft conference? Yes, I will. Did I take <laughs> both days off of work? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> As did I. <laughs> All right, Holden, take us out. Well, you do the closing word. That's your thing. You're the host, bitch. You're, you got to do the closing word. That's your thing. No, I'm, no, uh-huh. I'm not closing it up. Yes. <laughs> Trevor, close it out. 
It's close enough, Trevor. You have been listening to Respawn Aimfire, the irreverent gaming podcast with your awesome host, Chad Michael Ennis, Holden DePardo, and me, Trevor, um... Uh, oh, fuck, what is it? Patatus. Patatus, Trevor Patatus, that's right. Um, <laughs> and Trevor, where are you from? Tre- I... I am from. You know what? You know what? Chad? I am. I am leading this outro. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Don't, I'm so sorry. Don't come into your own podcast and tell me what to do as your guest. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> Shut it down. I'm so sorry. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> I am Trevor Bettis, and I am on a podcast that is all about Dungeons and Dragons called Difficulty Class. And starting this Friday, I will have a brand new host with me, Ali Deichman. Or, yeah, Ali Deichman. I could say it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we are going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, we'll specifically be talking about Storm King's Thunder and answering a bunch of questions. But if that doesn't interest you and you just want to hear some actual paid podcasts, these two fine gentlemen, Holden and Chad, were on an episode where we played, well, actually, more than one episode, where we played the <laughs> yeah, game of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> uh, you can go find that at the difficulty class. It is under the title of Adventure Series 1. But do you guys have anything before we go? No. No, that was, right. a, that was a great outro. You're a great host. Thank I you. I do what I can. I host by myself in a car for three months and look where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to tell mom. <laughs> Can't wait to tell mom. And you know what? That's that's like you always say here on this podcast when you leave. <laughs> Thanks for telling mom. <laughs> <laughs>